Okay, use future methods, or we can also call it future apex. So, what is it? Future apex is used to run processes in a separate thread at a later time when system resources become available. So, when can you use it? What is the best practice? So, future methods are typically used for call out to an external web service. Because when you want to make a call out, you don't know when the web service is going to return the response. It can be in a split of a second. But what if the web server was down? You can't control that. Or it's just not responding as expected. If you don't use future methods, your whole process will hang up. So it's just going to wait, 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 and eventually time out, or it's just going to break, right? So one typical example is to use on an, a call out to an external web service. So if you are making call outs from a trigger or after performing a DML operation, you must use a future or queuable method. So a call out a callout in a trigger would hold the database connection open for the lifetime of the callout and there is a big no-no in a multi-tenant environment. Also, you can use feature method for operations you want to run in their own thread with, when time permits such as some resource intensive calculation. So, for example, you have a process in a workflow or even an Apex trigger or, or a class and you want to run resource intensive calculation on this method. So, by utilizing future methods, you can do more, so to speak, right? Because this future method will run in a separate process outside your main process. It will trigger a future method that's going to run asynchronously from what you're currently processing at a later time, right? So for processes that you don't need the return or the response instantaneously, you don't know, you don't need to know what the response is going to be. You can process that at a later time, then use future methods because you can increase your limit of the process. <clears throat> So the next thing is isolating DML operations on different S object types to prevent the mixed DML error. Okay, so how is this invoked? Future method syntax, it's simply invoked with this annotation, add future before the method. And future method can only return void, so you can't define a future method that will return something back. It has to be void and it has to be static. So you cannot pass in objects into the method as a parameter. As a, as a parameter, you cannot. You can only input a primitive data type such as list of the record IDs. So just the record IDs, not, not the records itself, okay? So remember that that is important mm. here. Why? The reason why objects can't be passed as arguments to future method is because the object can change between the time you call the method and the time it actually executes, right? That makes sense. So you can't pass it because it's a future method. You don't know when it's going to execute. Right? Not like a synchronous, but it is asynchronous. So when you call it, it's going to process a later time. The record can be altered by another process, which is out, out of your control, out of your current process. So it's going to be a messy, messy situation. So you can't pass in records, but you can pass the list of records. Remember, future methods are executed when system resource becomes available. In this case, the future method may have an old object value 
when it actually executes, which can cause all sorts of bad things to happen. So that's key, okay? Remember that when you're coding with future methods. So let's see a sample. This is a sample of SMS utility, SMS utils. So it's defining call out equals true because it's calling out to a web service. To make a web service call out to an external service or API, you can create an Apex class with a future method that is marked with callout equals true. So add future and then you mark it callout equals true, meaning it's going to call out from Salesforce platform to another platform, in this case, a SMS platform to, to send SMS to your mobile phones. So on this particular class example, we have two methods. It's called send SMS async, which is asynchronous, which is actually calling the actual send SMS method. This is the send SMS method, right? Which you define over here, what it's gonna do. So, but this is going to be run at a future time, at a later time, because it's calling this from a future method. So this will be run later, right? So if you if you trigger this, this will be run in the background later. So you don't wait for the result from this. It's going to execute later and you can process that later. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So that's how a future method callout works. So now, how do you test it? Test classes. So testing future method is a little different than typical Apex testing to test future methods and close your test code between the start test and stop test test methods. So on this example, this is a mock of the callout of the HTTP callout. So we create a class called SMS callout mock, which is implements an interface of HTTP callout mock. And then it creates the response here. You can define this, what you want to respond back. You can set this status is success code 200 and content type application JSON. Now on your task class, right? You can create a task class, private static void tests and SMS, your test method. And then you have to first define the mock, test set mock, right? HTTP call, uh, callout mock dot class, which is new SMS callout mock from here. SMS callout mock, which will then return all this stuff, right? And then you, you, you start the test here. You start the test. And then SMS utils, which is this class here, SMS utils, right? Dot what? Dot send async or send SMS async, and then you define the number and then the message. So send SMS async is this one, which is going to call this method right here. You see, it's calling this method at a later time. At a later time is keyword. So on this test, all both methods get executed. This got called executed. This also got called executed. So it's, it's all covered. So now you can stop the test and then you can log it and then you accept equal, make sure all is good. And that's it. So best practices. Ensure that future methods execute as fast as possible. If you're using web service callouts, try to bundle all callouts together, important, from the same future method rather than using a separate future method for each callout. So bundle it together, okay? Conduct thorough testing at scale, important as well. Test that a, test that a trigger in queuing the future cause is able to handle a trigger collection of 200 records or more. This help determine if delay may occur given the design at current and future volumes. Okay. So also here is important as well. Consider using batch Apex instead of future method to process large numbers of records asynchronously. So if you just want to process a ton of records like updating data archiving, 
use batch, don't use future methods. Okay, so things to remember, the summary to sum things up, methods with future annotation must be static. It's always static and it's always returning void. The specified parameter must be primitive data types. You cannot pass objects or records. You cannot. So arrays of primitive data types, collection of primitive data types, future methods cannot take objects as arguments. Okay. So here is also a very important key. Future methods will not necessarily execute in the same order they are called. In addition, it's possible that two future methods could run concurrently, which could result in record locking if two methods were updating the same record. So for example, you are sending out two SMS message to two different phone numbers, right? In your list, in your list, when you pass your list to this um, method, your SMS utils method, the first phone number and the second phone number, right? It doesn't necessarily guarantee that the first phone number passed will receive the first SMS. The second phone number passed can receive the, the first SMS message, if that makes sense for you. Basically, feature method doesn't guarantee the order of execution. So if you're, you're passing 500 SMS numbers to be sent, you know, the 10th the number can be executed first. Who knows, right? Salesforce determines that not your code. So order of execution is not guaranteed. First in, first out is not guaranteed. Remember that. So if you're expecting it to be first in, first out, use queuable instead, not future method. I think it mentioned it here. Uh, what are we? Okay. Feature methods can be used in visual force controllers in the, in can't, okay, can't, cannot, in the get method name, get set method name, nor in the constructor. You cannot call a feature method from a feature method. So, yeah, this is also important. You cannot call a feature method from a feature method. You can't, you just can't do that. So, the get content and get content as PDF methods can't be used in methods with future annotation. So, this two method cannot be used in future methods. You are limited to 50 future calls per Apex invocation and there is an additional limit on the number of calls in a 24 hour period. So for future reference or future information on limits, see the link below. Here, execution governor and limits. So you can check that out yourself. Now we're done explaining about future methods. Let's get some code going. We will do this hands-on challenge together in a separate video. Bada bing, bada boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word, watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom.